Hi. She seems nice. Yeah, I'm sure. Real nice. Making movies out of flash in the pan trends is a risky proposition, one that rarely pays off critically or commercially. Whether it's the Saturday Night Live spin offs released long after the laughter stopped, or hedging your bets on a TikTok star's ability to act, there's a short shelf life that often finds these cash grabs releasing well after their sell by date. On the surface, at least, 2021's Karen couldn't have come at a more appropriate time. An online trend to denote a particular brand of obnoxious white women who antagonise service workers, retail employees and persons of colour, the Karen meme has mutated from a yammering nuisance to a twisted vanguard of entitled knee-jerk prejudice deployed against just about anyone they deem beneath them. You look like a All of which seems like it'd make for a compelling on-screen character study with the suburbs as a petri dish for bigotry and division, where hatred isn't born, but grown. She doesn't like black people. <coughs> yeah, you aren't going to find any of that here. Rather than a timely knife through the heart of an increasingly intolerant America, Karen is a crayon stuck up the nose of an infant with a barrier of slime and mucus between its blunt point and anything resembling a cogent thought. Bottom line, guys, if you don't like it here, go back. Hey, Mom. Back, back, back where? She can't be serious. Africa? Malik and Imani move into their idyllic new suburban home, only to find themselves under the voyeuristic eye of Karen, a mentally unstable racist who will stop at nothing to drive her new neighbours away. I, just, I don't have anything personal with you and your husband. No, I just think you guys need to move. Come on, leave town! No. Oh, I'll be your friend! No. Oh, you're mean! Now, if you're unsure whether this is going to be a modern interpolation of Lakeview Terrace, or a racially charged take on the killer next door trope, the answer is neither. There's not one second of build-up, no tension whatsoever, and not even a hint of that tried but true, I'm not a racist but facade. This is the opening shot of the movie. And if that wasn't on the nose enough, the first dialogue Karen shares with Malik is this. You know I saw all the cameras around your house and whatnot and uh... So you've been looking at my house? No, 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 no. I mean, I just so happen to see you have so you're many. you're casing the joint. Casing? We don't have any cash. Excuse me? From her crooked cop brother who talks like he swallowed his car keys, to the innumerable shots of Karen glowering with rage at the fact that black people exist, it's as subtle as a Tom McDonald music video, and just as embarrassing. Oh, and in case you're wondering, she asks to speak to the manager in the first 10 minutes, because of course she does. Karen, both the film and its namesake, are content to say the loud part loud and the quiet part never. Black lives matter. That's right. Don't all lives matter? Excuse you? I'm just saying, why do only black lives matter? The whole thing is a gross miscalculation that joins the illustrious likes of Smiley and Grumpy Cat's Worst Christmas Ever as a feature-length release based on a meme. The difference is, nobody was ever systemically oppressed, profiled, or put in harm's way as the result of a sourpuss in a Santa hat. What's her name? Karen. Right, but what's her real name? Karen, I just told you that. So, Karen is a Karen. Boy, God has a sense of humor. You've no doubt seen any number of real-life Karens caught on camera. Whether it's Amy Cooper lying to the police because a bird watcher politely asked her to put her dog on a leash, or this jerk dialing 911 on an eight-year-old selling bottled water on the sidewalk, these clips are viral phenomenons, but they're also tangible documents, 
each cell phone snippet shining a spotlight on the entrenched animosity and distorted reality that certain folks cling to when their privilege is challenged. There is an African American man. I am in Central Park. He is recording me, threatening myself and my dog. When Karen stages its own version of this, with Karen accosting a trio of local teens as they record every moment with open jawed amusement, it's not commenting on the state of the world. It's emulating and capitalising off of real pain, coming off as just one more despicable vignette in a compilation of tripe. I'm really scared. You're scared I'm actually You're scared? really scared! By making Karen the noxious, scenery-chomping lead, and reducing Malik and Imani to characters who react but never take action, the film marginalises the already marginalised. Feel free, pull the race card. Throughout, Karen's inexcusable behaviour is shown to be the exception rather than the rule. Her children, her friends, her colleagues, none of them share her hateful worldview, and they're all depicted as individuals. Now let's look at all the persons of colour with speaking parts. Without fail, every single one is defined by their proximity to Karen and her scornful diatribes. Their roles begin and end with their status as victims. Karen, you don't have to do this. Yes, I do. Now, when you reduce characterization to the sub one dimensional level of oppressor and oppressed, you're grossly oversimplifying the black experience and doing nothing to strip away the layers of why this person believes these objectively awful things. Get off my property, Karen. No problem. There's no sociological dissection of how these attitudes are cultivated and taught, zero attempt to delve into the pathology of hate on a conceptual level, and not so much as one word on matters of economic disparity, media misrepresentation, or gentrification. The closest we get is during the last 20 minutes, when we're told that Karen's husband was killed by someone who happened to be black, and it made her go full-blown Proud Boys batshit. Is that any way to speak to a neighbour? So, if we're not here to understand these behaviours, parse out the generational, political and ethnographic factors that create these divisions, and there's only the most rudimentary glance at how this impacts those on the receiving end of such rotten ideologies, why does this film exist? It's not satirical, because time and again we've seen that real people act exactly like this and much, much worse. And it isn't social commentary, unless you consider racism is bad some sort of revelatory stance to take. It's all just a cul-de-sac of recognisably shitty talking points. Like infinitely scrolling through your dirtbag uncle's Facebook, and never stopping to ask why a 53-year-old landlord posts a Punisher logo every time a cop shoots someone in the back. The Brotherhood takes care of its own. Since its release, the director has gone fishing for Get Out comparisons on social media, and let me tell you, that's like me challenging Steve Martin to a banjo duel. In many ways, Get Out felt like a landmark, capturing the zeitgeist with its dark comedy, layered metaphors, and a twisting sense of displacement and dread. It's meticulously performed, scored, and shot with the kind of stark, memorable visuals that evoke empathy and anger. Karen, on the other hand, is shot with the dollar store veneer of flat digital photography and fuck it, that'll do composition. It's all tell, no show. And even then, there's never one crumb of clarity to what any of this means beyond a skin-deep, sloppily strung-together montage of this woman being racist and everyone else saying, well, that's racist. This may have been intended as a rallying cry and a condemnation, but ultimately that's not what it is. Karen is a cynical product that exists to profit from fear, civil unrest, and the name recognition of a meme. You guys have been talking before I got here, huh? Shit talking? <laughs> 
That's classy. What I'll say is this. As someone who once did a whole video about an extremely racist, anti-racism movie called Soul Man, and is still wading through the predictable train wreck of the comments section, Karen isn't anywhere near as offensive. If only because it's more of an unpalatable husk than a functioning narrative work. It isn't about racism, it's barely about its titular racist, and despite all its repetitive alt-right catchphrases, it isn't actually about anything. There is no lesson to be learned, no truth to power, and no attempt to challenge or converse about identity politics in a post-Obama, post-Trump America. This is just 90 minutes of shock and awe bigotry that won't sway the hateful, and does nothing to show a more conscientious audience that they won't already be acutely aware of. The whole thing is exploitative without being trashy, gritty, bold, or entertaining enough to be considered exploitation cinema. If you really want to hear the odious sputum of an abrasive white person, turn on Fox News or troll through Twitter for a couple of seconds. Trust me, it'll be quicker, funnier, and less tragically dull than Karen. A trying to return an item long after the warranty is expired for our Patreon producers Jennifer C, Claire M D, Becky O, and Nicholas Le Revere, and an unbearably awkward holiday dinner for all these amazing folks who support the channel over on Patreon. So what's the worst movie you've ever seen trying to capitalise on a fleeting trend, and what do you think of the existence of this whole tone-deaf affair? Sound off down in the comments, and hey, why not share these videos with a friend or on your social media? It really, really helps these videos get seen by more people. If you're in a position to do so, consider checking out our Patreon at the link in the description below, where you can sign up to the Inframe Out Film Club, get your name in the end credits, and exclusive access to our private Discord. As always, thank you for watching. Until next time, this is Inframe Out.